<sighs> hey everybody, Sam Dog the infamous 253 coming at you with Dallas Stewart on the speakerphone. Dallas, how you doing? Uh pretty good. Uh <laughs> my damn power is out at, at my apartment. That's about the only bad thing. That's that sucks. <laughs> Other than that, though, a, a solid 11 and 5 week on week 12. We won 11 and 5, and now we are on to the week 13 picks for the 2023 NFL season. First off, and thank God we're going to get this one out the way first, though, because it's the Thursday night game. We got the Seahawks going to Jerry World to take on the Dallas Cowboys. We got our butts kicked, obviously, by San Francisco and the Cow- back on Thanksgiving, and the Cowboys kicked the commander's butt on thanksgiving with absolute ease as we absolutely expected and yeah still doesn't get any easier with all we have to we have to face now because our offensive line absolutely got destroyed worst game it's played all year too and you know going up against that niners pass rush and now pretty much having to go up against micah parsons which micah parsons against stone forsyth one-on-one is a recipe for disaster for us unfortunately yeah it is yeah I mean, but you know, as Seahawks fans, hey, we've made it through worse, right? And you know, season's part way over, and hopefully, I'll tell you what, it's gonna be some moves we're gonna have to be making this off season too, especially at the offensive core and coordinator spot too, especially after what happened, which we'll talk about later on in this video too. But unfortunately, I gotta take the Cowboys to freaking take care of their business against us. Knock on wood, but you know, it's like. <sighs> sucks to have to tell the truth, but you know, got to tell the truth in tough times like this with our team, but I got to go Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, unfortunately I got to go with Dallas Cowboys as well. I just hope we can maybe uh, be, a, be a little more competitive than we were against the 49ers and maybe cause a turnover or two. And I hope I don't have to turn it in the second half. Yeah, We better at least still be in it at halftime. Yeah. <sighs> it's unfortunate, but uh, hope for the best, but expect the worst. But, you know, we made it through worse, right, Dallas? Yeah. All right. Anyway, up next, we got AFC South rivalry. We got the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Tennessee Titans. The Colts won that crazy matchup with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Titans uh, won by seven over the Carolina Panthers, which resulted in the Carolina Panthers firing head coach Frank Reich. Yeah, it's just a mess down in uh, Carolina right now. Yeah, Frank Reich didn't even make it his first full year as the Panthers head coach. I'll tell you what, he's a hell of an offensive coordinator. If we get rid of Walden at this year, I would not mind getting Frank Reich as our OC. He was a great OC for Philly when Philly won the Super Bowl in 2017, that's for sure. Uh, God, Carolina fired their coach back-to-back years. Yeah, Steve. Well, Steve Wolf was the interim head coach. I'll tell you what, Carolina was dumb for they uh, fired they fired Matt Rule, I believe, after like week five last year. Yeah, that's Carolina. But Tennessee Titans, though, 17 to 10 win. Still iffy, especially on their defense. And Derrick Henry's about the only good thing they got going on their offensive on their offensive arsenal, aside from Will Levis when he gets a good Big play to DeAndre Hopkins and Indianapolis Colts Gardner Minshew holding them up as best as they as best as he can and they were in a little bit of a battle but other than that for the most part until Mike Evans started going off they were they were handling Tampa Bay pretty well last week. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take. I'm is this the second time these two second or first time these two teams have faced? I think it's I think it's still the first. I don't I don't know I don't. You know what? Maybe I think they did play before. I think this is the second time. All right. I'm going to go ahead, though. I'm going to take the Colts to get it done against the Titans. I'm taking Indianapolis. Yeah, I'm going to take Indianapolis to get it done uh, and get to 7-5. and five. Uh, I think the Titans have a little bit of a letdown. Yeah. They're, playing a, they're playing a better team this week. Oh, by far and away. All right, up next, we got the Atlanta Falcons going to MetLife Stadium to take on the New York Jets. The Falcons uh, beat the New Orleans Saints last week, forced some crazy turnovers in that game, especially a big key fumble on Taysom Hill. And the New York Jets were pretty much last week, they were freaking just on. They played the Black Friday game, and they threw a Hail Mary pick six and got absolutely pistol whipped by the Miami Dolphins. Really? a Hail Mary pick six at the end of the first half. Yeah. 
Pretty only freak. happens to the Jets. Only to the Jets, man. Ooh, I can't remember the last time anything like that's ever happened before, too. I mean, we've had a field goal uh, kick six before, too. I mean, Antonio Cromartie back in the day. I think it was the Chargers against the Minnesota Vikings back in, like, I don't know, late 2000s, maybe, beginning of the 2010s. Someone let me know in the comments down below. But the Atlanta Falcons just took care of their business. The Jets, you know, the Jets offense is just abysmal, just super-duper abysmal now. Zach Wilson obviously out. Now Tim Boyle is going to be the starting quarterback for the Jets, too. Are they still going to go Tim Boyle this week, too, even after what happened last week? I think they are. Yeah. They just, they're just they a mess at the quarterback situation. Yep, and Atlanta is leading the NFC South, surprisingly. Yeah, that dumpster fire of a division. Yeah, I'm taking the Falcons. Yeah, I'm going to take the Falcons to hand the Jets. What would it be, like their fifth straight loss? Yeah. I think so, man. All right. Another fourth straight loss, something like that. Something like that. But, uh, yep, the Jets, you know, ever since losing Aaron Rodgers week one, and even though they got the surprising win, just. Now they're feeling the effects of it. Big now time. this is the team I expected yes, them to is. be. Yeah, we expected them to be that. After, this is what we expect them to be way after losing Rodgers. It's just a matter of time until it started to show, and now it's starting to show. All right, up next, we got the Detroit Lions going to New Orleans to take on the Saints. The Lions surprisingly fell for a trap at home on Thanksgiving against the Green Bay Packers, one I absolutely did not expect to happen. The Lions have lost seven consec- seven straight Thanksgiving games in a row, and seven years in a row, wow. losing on Thanksgiving. And then the New Orleans Saints obviously losing that tough one to the Atlanta Falcons yeah. in Atlanta. And whew, Detroit, you know, they right now, I mean, they're – they're pretty much the three seed after what San Francisco did to us. And, you know, it was a tough loss for them. I don't know what the hell happened to Goff and the Lions offense on Thanksgiving, but I expect them to bounce back and get back on track. So I'm going to take the Detroit Lions to handle their business in New Orleans against the Saints. So give me Detroit. Yeah, give me the Detroit to bounce back uh, after that. Just kind of an egg they laid on Thanksgiving against the uh, Packers. Just too many mistakes, turnovers. And I expect them to bounce back this week against New Orleans. Yeah, same here. Whew, all right, up next, we got the Denver Broncos going to Houston to take on the Texans. The Broncos with a big, big win over the Cleveland Browns. Russell Wilson playing just playing some good football right now. The Houston Texans in a tough matchup with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Guy couldn't make that long 59-yard field goal or 58-yard field goal to tie the game for a yeah, time, but it absolutely it was just short. Yeah, but so the Texans and Jaguars ended up splitting on the season, and great effort from C.J. Stroud, you know. He's still showing it, and I still will give him my vote for Offensive Rookie of the Year. He's still playing some good football, but Denver, Denver have to start out 1-5. and They're they're just on a roll right now. They're They're looking pretty good. They're looking to try to get into the playoffs. Yeah, they, their defense has been playing really well. You know, yeah, they've they've been clicking um, since they started off one and five. Yeah, can CJ Stroud hang with Russell Wilson? This will be an interesting one to watch. But, yeah, this is a tough one. But I'm going to give the slight edge to Denver. I like the team that's on the roll right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the Broncos. Yeah, give me Denver to make it six in a row and get to seven and five. How about that? They looked like they were dead in the water when they were one and five. It looked like they were going to have a top five pick. Oh, yeah. Give them credit for turning their season around. Yeah, I think that credit also got to go to Sean Payton with his coaching job, too. Yeah. Now it's starting to look like it's looking better than what Nathaniel Hackett did, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> So maybe Nathaniel I mean, Hackett. They already, have, they're already uh, have more wins than they did last year. Yeah, I mean, granted, though the Jets won that game earlier, but give give credit to Sean Payton. Maybe, maybe Nathaniel Hackett won't have the last laugh after all. Maybe. No. Yeah. All right. Up next, we got the L.A. Chargers going to New England to take on the Patriots. The Chargers lost by ten to the Baltimore Ravens on Sunday Night Football, and the Patriots. Oh my! And an absolute. That probably played the toilet bowl of the year. It lived up to it. It lived up to it. That Giants Patriots game. The guy couldn't even make a 35 yard field goal to tie the game. It was a chip shot field goal, and he couldn't even make a 35 yarder to tie the game and force overtime. You know, thank yeah. God that game didn't go to overtime because it was 
way worse than it was like the super shitty toilet bowl. Yeah, I think that gets my vote for the worst game of this year. By far and away, it was worse than the Jets Giants game. Granted, the Giants were on the losing end of that one, but the Giants were on the winning end of that one against the Patriots and the Super Bowl 42 and 46 turned super shitty toilet bowl game of the year now. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> oh, I'm taking the I'm taking the Chargers. Yeah, I'm taking the Chargers, even though they're probably one of the most disappointing teams. The the Patriots are just abysmal this year. Uh I think they're they're in tank mode oh, right now. Oh yeah. Patriots could possibly be taking one of those tough those top quarterbacks in the upcoming draft. You know they're gonna be taking a quarterback after this year. Yeah. All right, up next, we got the Arizona Cardinals going to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. Super Bowl 43 rematch. The Steelers got that big win over the Joe Burrowless Cincinnati Bengals, while the Arizona Cardinals got pistol whipped and absolutely pistol whipped at home by the Los Angeles Rams, as we were expecting. Yeah. Yeah, Cardinals definitely still one of the other worst teams, but not as bad as the Patriots and I'm um, and not as bad as the Carolina Panthers though. Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, I think that I think I think Arizona's like the third worst team in the league. Yeah, Steelers though after Fire Matt Canada, they actually had 400 yards of offense. Yeah, but still less than 20 points. Yeah, still less than 20 points. But whew, I'm gonna go ahead though and I'm gonna take the Pittsburgh Steelers to continue their ownership of the Arizona Cardinals. Give me the Steelers. Yeah, give me uh, the Steelers as well. Uh, they're kind of going through a soft part of their schedule right now, and I think they're going to take advantage again this week. This is at least the softest part, taking on the Cardinals. Yeah, and then I think they have New England on, on Thursday Night Football next week. God, yeah, they're going through a soft part of their stri- schedule right now. Yep. All right, up next. We I, still got... don't think they're even, I still don't think they're even that good, even though they're 7-4. and four. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, suspect, it's a suspectable 7-4. Seven, seven and four. But all right, up next, yeah. we got the Miami Dolphins going to Washington to take on the Commanders. Dolphins, the team with the Hail Mary pick six against the New York Jets, won the Black Friday game with ease. Meanwhile, the Washington Commanders. The Commanders got absolutely dominated on Thanksgiving by the Dallas Cowboys, as expected. You know, they are just another one of those bad teams as well. Okay, quarterback, you know, which who knows how much potential Sam Howell will have. I mean, granted, we've seen it, granted, but who knows in the upcoming years, even maybe if Washington maybe takes the quarterback, if they're not sold on Sam Howell for the long-term future, granted for how good Howell has looked, though, but he's taking on this, 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 he's taking on the Dolphins much. A much, much better team, you know, obviously much better team, of course, than, I mean, probably, I think the Dolphins and Cowboys maybe pretty much even, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the Miami Dolphins with my lock of the week here. Give me the Dolphins. Yeah, Dolphins and a lock. The, the Washington's just in shambles right now. They fired Jack Del Rio after that game. I could see them firing Ron Rivera after this season, man, that win against Washington looks even worse now. Yeah, it really. But it does. took a game-winning field goal to beat them. Yeah, thank God it wasn't. That, I think that was probably one of our ugliest wins of the year. Now that I think about it. Oh yeah, for sure, man, by far and away. Ooh, all right. Up next, we got the NFC South rivalry. We got the worst team in the league, the Carolina Panthers. Going to Tampa to take on the Buccaneers. This is the second time these two teams have faced. We know the Buccaneers just lost to the Colts, though, and the Panthers obviously lost by a touchdown to the Tennessee Titans. The iffy NFC South that Atlanta Falcons absolutely lead, but it's obvious that Carolina is going to be finishing last again in that division. They just fired Frank Reich, their head coach, and they just fired – their other, I think they just fired their other their offensive coordinator as well too. They Panthers Did made they? made some making some coaching changes and just mid season. Frank Reich didn't even make it the full year. And meanwhile, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, like we mentioned, tough game for Baker. Fought back, getting some passes to Mike Evans, but it just wasn't enough. And you know, the Tony Dungy Bowl ended with the Buccaneers on the losing end. Because you know, as the two former Tony Dungy teams, as Chris Berman talked about in prime time, or or the Booger McFarland Bowl, because Booger played for both those teams. But give me the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to to get it done against the Panthers. So I'm bounce back. I'm taking the Bucks. 
Yeah, I'm taking the Bucks to bounce back in my toilet bowl of week 13. Yeah. And then, and you know what? Also, we, another, you know, we got another red zone this week because the Seahawks played Thursday night. So this will be another red zone week, too. So stay tuned for that, too. Because uh, we got arguably what could be an NFC championship preview again this this next one. We got the San Francisco 49ers going to Philly to take on the Eagles. Y'all know what the 49ers did to us. We already talked about that. Still in good, but the Philadelphia Eagles, crazy, crazy game that went to overtime against the Buffalo Bills. Cannot believe Jalen Hurts. Obviously, I was not sleeping on them. They were missing Dallas Goddard and Lane Johnson. The Eagles were missing some guys, and they were still able to lead that comeback. And Jake Elliott with an amazing 59-yard field goal in that torrential downpour in the rain and that crazy weather. Just an incredible kick. And then they just led that after the uh, that miscommunication between Josh Allen and Gabe Davis holding them that field goal and just driving down. Jalen Hurts was able to run it in for the win with ease, man. Just who this is arguably one of the this could be another one of the games of the year, just like that Bills Eagles game is. But will the Eagles have Dallas Goddard back this week? That's what I want to know, too, though. And we know how hard of an atmosphere Philly is to play for. Brock Purdy felt it firsthand in that NFC Championship when he got knocked the fuck out by Hassan Reddick. Yeah. Yeah. This arguably is this is going to be one of the really good ones. But you know something? I'm going to go ahead though. I'm going to give the edge to Philly. I'm going to go take I'm going to take the Philadelphia Eagles to pretty much solidify the number 1 seed in the NFC. So far they hold on to it by a mile, but I think this is the game where they solidify it. I'm going to take the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, give me the Eagles in a thriller, uh, and pretty much they would take a commanding uh, lead for home field if they can win this game, and I, that's what I think they're gonna uh, do in a close one. Yeah. I don't expect the I don't expect the blowout this time. No, I don't expect the blowout. I think this game will be a lot more closer. I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if San Francisco wins it to try to keep themselves in that race for the uh, number one seed, but ultimately. I think the road to Super, to Super Bowl 58 goes through Philadelphia again on the NFC side. You know that road. Yeah, I don't, th- I don't think Brock Purdy gets hurt this time. Nah. But if Hassan Reddick puts a big enough hit on him, who knows? You know, I mean, Brad, I don't think he'll get hurt, but Philly's defense, you know they're going to bring it, and I think they can maybe force some interceptions because we know what happened last time around that NFC Championship game. Grant, we know they don't have Hargrave this time. What kind of game will Jalen Carter have? What kind of game will Hassan Reddick have? Is Fletcher Cox going to be back? Because they lost Fletcher Cox during that that Buffalo game. Will Fletcher Cox be ready to go by then? Yeah. We know they still got Brandon Graham. We They've got some dogs. And I think Philly arguably has the best offensive line in the league still. Doesn't Vernon Hargraves play for the Niners now? Yeah, Har- Javon Hargrave plays for uh, the Niners, exactly. Javon Hargraves. Yeah, Sorry. Javon Hargrave has a potential revenge game, but we'll see. But I'm still going to give the edge to Philly. Yeah, so am I. Just a slight edge. Yeah. All right, up next, we got the Cleveland Browns going to SoFi Stadium to take on the Los Angeles Rams. The Browns got dominated by the Denver Broncos and the Rams – absolutely dominated the Arizona Cardinals Rams looking like they're going to definitely take, take that playoff spot from us most likely because they're on an easy part of their schedule now until they play the 49ers again. Let's be real. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take the Rams to just keep it rolling. Give me the Rams. Yeah. Give me the Rams to make it three in a row and get back to 500 at six and six. I think the Browns are going to start to fall apart. Yeah. Without Deshaun Watson. Oh, yeah. Buffalo. They showed some serious weaknesses last week. And then Dorian Thompson Robinson left the game with a concussion. And they had to go back to PJ Walker. And then that Denver defense just smothered them. Yeah. They couldn't do anything on that Denver defense. They could not. Absolutely not, man. Who? All right. Up next, we got the Sunday night game. We got the Kansas City Chiefs going to Lambeau Field to take on the Green Bay Packers Super Bowl one rematch. Lamar Hunt's team against Coach Lombardi's team. The Chiefs getting that freaking uh, win, a crazy comeback win. They were starting super rusty down in Vegas last Sunday against the Las Vegas Raiders, down 14-0. to And then after that, once they tied it up, it was all Chiefs from there on in the second half. Yeah, the – the Raiders just fell apart after they got up 14 to zero. Meanwhile, the Green Bay Packers got to give them props for 
for making the Lions fall for that trap at home on Thanksgiving. And uh, Jordan Love looked good. The defense, Packers defense forced a bunch of turnovers on Jared Goff. I got to give him props. I thought for sure the Packers were going to get mopped again like they did earlier in week four when I was in New York when I did that stream in uh, Soho Cigar Bar. I thought for sure that they were going to get mopped again by the Lions. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, but hate to say it, Green Bay. This time, you're taking on Mahomes. Mahomes is going to be rolling in hot in the Lambeau field, and this time around, Mahomes is going to just carve them up. Give me the Chiefs. Yeah, give me the Chiefs. God, I wish this could have been Rodgers versus Mahomes if Rodgers was just still in Green Bay. And if you didn't tear the Achilles. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, the Monday night game. We got the Joe burrow Cincinnati Bengals who lost to the Steelers going to Jacksonville to take on the Jaguars, who barely escaped Houston with a and a crazy win, which that Jaguars-Houston rivalry may be, may be one of the next great rivalries. Who knows? Especially with how good C.J. Stroud is playing lately. But Jacksonville, fortunate enough to get out of Houston with a three-point win. Man, that was one of the other best games of the week during, the, during our red zone slate, wouldn't you say? Yeah, that was a good early game. Yeah, but Bengals are pretty much screwed. We stuck, Fork was stuck into them once Burrow was announced out for the season, and this will be an easy Monday night picking for the for for Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. I'm taking take give me the Jacksonville Jaguars to take care of their business and just keep it rolling in the AFC South. Just keep it rolling, and who knows what seed they're gonna get? It'll be interesting, but I like the Jaguars better here. Give me the Jags. Yeah, give me the Jags. The Bengals are just out, man. Uh, this man, this matchup lost a lot of uh, luster after Burrow went down. Yeah, man, that just sucks for Cincinnati. Oh, yeah, big time, man. Whew, all right, and there you have it. Those are our Week 13 picks. So we got our team lose, falling to Dallas. Got the Colts. Over the Titans, the Falcons over the Jets, Lions over Saints, Broncos over Texans, Chargers over Patriots, Steelers over Cardinals, Dolphins over Commanders, Buccaneers over Panthers, Eagles over 49ers, Rams over Browns, Chiefs over Packers, and Jaguars over Bengals. Red Zone again this weekend. We'll be back for the post-game recap after Thursday Night Football. Hope for the best with the Seahawks and hope we can... Pull some miracle, not expecting it, but you know, it's going to be competitive. At least, we, hopefully, we can at least be competitive, though. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, wouldn't be surprised if we lose again, though. But yeah, anyway, drop your picks down in the comments below, and we will catch you on Thursday with a post game recap of the Seahawks Cowboys game. If you ain't with it, you ain't infamous, and as always, go Seahawks.